So that's how a regular palooka goes from cabbie to mob enforcer overnight, is it? Just dumb luck. It didn't feel that way at the time. Me parking on that particular street, taking a break just when Polly and Sam are coming around the corner. What are the odds? It felt like, I don't know, like someone was watching out for us. <laughs> Whatever helps you sleep at night, pal, but it's a lucky break all the same. I mean, one day you're busting your back, doing an honest day's work in a city that's been trying to scrape you off its heels since the day you stepped off the boat. And the next you're stuffing your pockets full of Salieri's dirty money and lording it over the rest of us. Yeah, I wasn't like that. Back then, Salieri didn't have the run of the city. For every buck Salieri made, Don Morello would turn ten. He paid off cops, politicians, judges, and anyone he couldn't buy. He scared into looking the other way. He did seem to have the city jumping in its own shadow, I'll give you that. You hear anything about Joey Crackers? Yeah, got his name in the Morello file, sure. Boxer, right? Yeah. That's the guy. Hmm. So this remake is still really um it's it's just We're really good looking. Oh no, Joey this cutscene. Probably daydreaming about winning a belt or something. I saw this um uh this cutscene <sighs> before the game came out. Damn it! Moron! The general, your goddamn eyes closed! Look at this! Jesus, Mary, Joseph, Dumb, Tom Morello, I didn't know it was you. You know anybody else driving a rare import in this part of town, Joey? No. Well, then, uh, I'm sorry, I, uh, I was driving real slow. You're saying this is my fault? No, 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 no sir. I, I just... I just, I, I ain't never been in no accident. Well, repairs are gonna be expensive. Oh, you, you're not gonna need that, sir. The tires are just fine. The grills a little bent up, is all. I mean, I got a cousin, I got... Oh. And this scene is actually pretty realistic for the time period, believe it or not. With those two cops standing there, the reason the two cops aren't doing anything is because they see that that's the Don. It's either the two cops are, are too afraid or they're paid off and corrupt. It's either one of the, one of the two. Um, because in this time period, the police were just really, really corrupt. Corruption still exists today, but they were just much more so corrupt much back then. Tail, pal. You got an informant right there that says Marilla made a mint every time crackers went to the mat. That's true, too. And still, Marilla left that poor sap dead in the street. Head all caved in. Not Don Square. Oh, maybe the Don knew Joey's career was on the downhill. Or maybe he was trying to scare some other guy into paying up. Who knows? Don Celieri chalked it up to Morello not being able to think straight when he was mad. You, uh... Huh? Have any more run-ins with Morello's crew back then? Not at first. For a couple of years after I joined up, things were quiet. We got into a few dust-ups with guys trying to muscle in, but elsewise it was just the usual routine. We are running booze, offering protection, me and the boys doing rounds to collect, small time. But, I ain't gonna lie. Most days, we was also having a bit of fun. Like I was saying, um, the police corruption in this time period was just really high and not only that all types of corruption political officials were also extremely corrupt uh, mayors were oftentimes in the mafia's pockets sometimes even governors were um the police chiefs oftentimes were in the mafia's pockets the uh, mafia has had so much influence and if, if a situation like that happened where the don was really bashing in someone's brains in the middle of the street um the police oftentimes would not interfere they would interfere if it was somebody else but if it's the don that, that's doing that they wouldn't do anything if they recognized him because because you would not want to be that cop that would arrest that Don in the street. Because if you arrest, if you were the cop that arrested that Don, the mafia would then find out exactly um, who that cop was, where that cop lived, and then it would just not, it would just not be good. So it was either fear or corruption, or maybe it was actually a combination of both fear and corruption. They were just paid off, um, and they just oftentimes didn't do anything. That's how the mafia had grown so big during Prohibition, because they pretty much paid everybody off or scared any anybody off that they couldn't um, pay off, just like Tommy said. And I also wanted to mention this, guys. Um, uh, I missed this in my previous playthrough, one year since the crash. This is talking about Black Tuesday. Let's read through it. 
The worst panic in Wall Street's peacetime history was one year ago today, and still no escape from the wider economic depression that has followed. And unemployment reached 8% this month, but given the prevailing trend of shuttering businesses, banks, and foreclosed farmsteads, some economists warn that this could double, perhaps even triple in the coming years. So this is the worst day in stock um, in stock market history, and you oftentimes hear stock traders referencing Black Tuesday, and this is the start of the Great Depression is on Black Tuesday. Um, and this is October 29th, 1930. So this is one year exactly uh, since it happened. Um, basically, what had happened was people, um, the stock market was still relatively new and millionaires, rich people were making a lot of money from the stock market. And then what happened was average working class people wanted to start making money from the stock market. So everybody started buying stocks on um, working class people, middle class people, pretty much everybody um, started buying stocks. But a lot of people didn't have the money to buy stocks. They started borrowing on credit and margin. Um, so they started borrowing money that they didn't have in order to um, invest it in stocks. And they were hoping that they would get profits from these stocks, make all their money back and plus a profit and pay the bank off. What happened was um, stock traders panicked when they saw this. The stock market completely fell down. Um, it had like the, a record low, completely down caused a huge crash in the stock market. People lost all their money in the stock market. They were unable to pay back the banks. The banks had then lost all their money, had pretty much shut down. And not only were the banks shutting down, but everybody else that had money in the banks, they weren't able to get their money out of the banks. And this is what had started the um, Great Depression. And in this time period, there was no um, uh, government insured money. So like today, if you have like, I think it's $250,000, if you have that in the bank and the bank shuts down, you're still guaranteed that money. The government will give you that money. Back then, there was none of that. So the bank completely collapsed. You lost all your money. You were out. And this is what um, greatly contributed to the Great Depression. Tommy, thanks for getting down here so quickly. Yeah, sure thing, boss. What do you need? You know, there's a race coming up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Polly and Sam have some money on uh, the local. Mikey Dunn. That's the guy. He's a good kid, but a bit of a scrapper. Not too smart with his money. A few years ago, Mikey comes to me asking for a loan. He wants to get new tires so he can keep racing junkers out at the quarry. Hmm. I like fast cars. I figured it'll be a bit of a hobby. Turns out, Mikey's a great investment. The kid can't lose a race if he walks the track. He graduates from the junkers to gal jobs, and I start placing a few bets on him here and there. Next thing I know, I've made all my money back and more. Hey, uh, Sam says he's the guy to beat. He was. We ran all the competition out of town. But now Ralph says there's a hotshot European entering the race. And he's got a car faster than our boys by a country mile. How much do we stand to lose? A truckload. But not just our outfit. A lot of guys from the neighborhood come to me for financial advice. They've all put money down on this kid. It'll be like Black Thursday around here if he loses. Well, for everyone except Morello. Oh, you think he's from the European? Oh, I'm certain of it. You want something to happen to the driver? Can't find him. Merle's got him holed up somewhere safe. Besides, if he drops out or disappears now, none of our wagers will stay. Everyone will cry foul, say the race is fixed. What about his car? That's the ticket, Tommy. Ralph knows a guard at the track. You'll go down there tonight, you'll boost the European's car, Bring it to one of our mechanics and make a few adjustments to bring the car back. Should be no problem, boss. Sarah, gonna get when the Don says, um, Black... When the Don says um, Black Thursday, he's talking about, um, uh, he's talking reference to Black Tuesday. Where were you last night? I was with you. You go on ahead, Pam. I'll deal with this mook. Polly. He drove you home. Oh, yeah. Christ. That was some night. For you, maybe. But those brads, not so much. Help you, Tom? Nah, just looking around. I saw you talking to the Don. So you know what to do. He didn't say, go look around. So a Black Tuesday was the um, start of the... Uh, it was the start of the Great Depression when the stock market completely crashed. So that's a five, a six. Hey, Titi Tommy. Big day coming up, right? right? You, you, you seen the race before? Uh, kind of hard to miss. Celieri isn't going to let Morello break his winning streak, huh? No, no, sir. Gotta send him a message. So, to 
tonight, we will borrow his guy's motor from the track. My friend Bobby is a guard. For a little dough, he'll show you where it is. Then look someplace else while you t t t turn the key. I like Bobby already. Sure. Then in there is a Sutter guy, L Lucas Bertone. You take the car to him down under the Ju Ju Giuliano Bridge. He'll, you know, tune it a little. Make the race tomorrow more, more, more interesting. Then I take the car straight back and Bobby can stop looking someplace else. But you gotta be quick. B -b Bobby comes off shift at 1.30 and then the and, and, and next guy, he's an ass. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, if you need somewhere to keep your mama motor safe where no one can to take them, feel free to use the garage. Carlo finally got around to clear it out. Now, we shall take a special look at the only thing anyone seems to be talking about at the moment. That's right, folks. Tomorrow is the big one, the highlight of the racing calendar, the Lost Heaven Grand Prix. Can you believe it? I dare say you can feel the excitement in the air. Certainly, here at Behringer's, I sensed a certain electricity among those shopping today. Tomorrow, the Autodrome will play host to the very best drivers World Motorsport has to offer, including defending champion, the Baron of Speed himself, Martin Lichtenberg. The German Wunderkind will be competing in his gleaming Carazella, in which he's won three of his last four races. Hoping to seize victory from the clutches of the heavy favorite are Pasquale the Italian and Raymond Hemmings of Australia. I would have to say that, as accomplished drivers as they are, the smart money would have to be on Lichtenberg scoring another victory tomorrow in Lost Heaven. His imperious driving style, aggression, and bravery will almost certainly prove too much for the chasing pack. But by God, what a spectacle the chase will prove to be. The Grand Prix by Big Break Cigarettes and Trago Motor Oil, both of which can be found here at Behringer's You Bobby, yep. We can take your car to the garage. Place is empty. Any friend of Ralphie's a friend of mine. I mean, if you got the money, sure. And um, a lot of people in the comments, they told me that, um, uh, they told me that this, this part is going to make me rage. And if the title of this video is This, this, this Race Made Me Rage, well, then you, you know how I feel about this section. I hate it. Ah, come on. Name a better place to pick up a dame than this place this weekend. Don't get me started. Things I've seen. The race in this is apparently really bad in the remake. Okay, this is it. She is. 1929 Carazella C Series. Best in class. It's a shame you gotta wreck it. If they see this down the road, cops are gonna ask questions. When they catch up, sure. Try to keep it one piece, too, huh? So, I gotta be back from Breton by 1.30 before the next guy shift. Yeah, he's an ass. <laughs> Same thing, too. <sighs> Let's hope I don't get a copyright claim for music that's over a hundred years old. Oh no. Ooh. I gotta be fast. Oh. 
Damn, it spun out on me. I'm not gonna be able to catch up to this car. Tommy Angelo. Lucas Batoni. Oh, ain't she a thing of beauty? We don't have much time. Hey, I'm a fast worker. Sit tight. Hello, you. So he's gonna mess up the car to make it harder for um, Morello's driver to win. Okay, she's done. Thanks, Lucas. I gotta get back before anyone catches on. Yeah. Go easy with her. She's gonna misbehave. Hey, tell Mr. Salieri I'm always available for this kind of work. I do stuff for a lot of people, but I always know where I stand with you guys. Hot cars, getaways, anything for the right price. Let's just hope Salieri's guy wins tomorrow. For all our sakes. Okay, drive careful. Okay, now I got two minutes to get back and on a bad engine, too. I'm guessing I can't let that red bar go up all the way. We can make it. Ah, no, 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 no. gonna be really close. Oh, I made it. That was so close. So Sam walks out of the bathroom, and I'm praying he's 
got a piece on him, because I'm not sure the bartender's going to hand over what he owes. And his two sons, they're inching closer. I can hear them cracking their knuckles. They're both seven feet tall, built like brick shit houses. What were you carrying? My dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This crazy bastard, he waltzes out of the bathroom, just starts pissing all over the joint. <laughs> really? What, he didn't call the cops? Nah. Sometimes you just got to make them think you're crazy. <laughs> Tom. You got a moment? No. Oh. Sure, Frank. You've got a bit of a situation. Is the boss okay? Oh, yeah, it's nothing like that. Mikey Dunn, our driver. Some of Morello's guys roughed him up pretty good last night. Broke his arm, broke his jaw. Sent him to the hospital. Jesus. Yeah, tough locker for Mikey. Anyway, you're going to race for him. Wait, what? Frank, Tom. I don't know. There's a half hour before the starting gun goes off, so this is not a discussion. The Don wants to win. Frank has a very heavy Italian accent in the remake. And you in the original, he sounds man. much different. Otherwise, I'd be talking to someone else. Yeah. Okay, Frank. Good. Rafi has the car gassed and ready. Get to the track right away. Imagine how scary this situation must be that you gotta race for the Don, that all your the Don has all his money bet on you. From Europe, we got the hot shot favorite, Martin Lichtenberg, taking some time out of the international series. Man, this reminds me a lot of the Saboteur, um, and another great game I played a long time ago. I might do a walkthrough of it one day. Replacing him is uh Tommy Andrew. Well, I'm sure you'll all join me in wishing him good luck. They're lined up on the grid. They're ready to start. They're off. Okay, here we go. This is the race. Lichtenberg's in trouble. There's something up with his car. Lichtenberg is out. The That's the guy that we sabotaged. Son of a bitch! Him! Driving from Angelo. Oh, man. Okay, we're in fifth place now. Oh no, 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 no. Come on. Oh, take two. Okay, let's try again. Oh my. Jesus. Oh. They're ready to start. Next try.
Oh man. Gotta be kidding me. See ya, son of a bitch. Some drivers really starting to stretch out ahead now. See ya. How are they getting ahead of me so much like that? We pretty much have the same car. No, 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 no. Okay, let's do this. Damn NPCs in the way. Okay, ninth place. That's not too bad. Fourth place now. No, 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 don't spin out. I have to catch up. I have to at least get into third place on this lap. Wish me luck on this, guys. Hopefully this is the one where I finally complete this.
Yes. Now we can't mess this up. We're first. Oh my god, do I got it? Do I got it? They're right behind me. Oh, I got it. Oh my god. Oh my god, this... Oh, it's over. It's finally over. Oh my god, I, I hated that race so much. Oh man, whoever made that race. Hey. Tommy, there's <laughs> our winner. Hey, Tom, just want to thank you for stepping in like you did. I had six months rent riding on that race. I'd be homeless now if not for you. I just did what the Don asked, Lucas. Well, you gotta let me find a way to repay you. Stop by my garage when you get a chance. I might have a line on something that'll turn a buck for you. Sure, thanks. I knew you wouldn't let us down, Tom. You made us all a lot of money today. And Morell's gonna be picking up pennies off the sidewalk for weeks. <laughs> hey, what about the European? He's probably wearing cement boots by now, the poor bastard. Ooh. Here. You earned every dollar of this. Take your girl out somewhere nice. Thanks, boss. You got a girl, right? I don't want you blowing all that on booze and whores. Huh? <laughs> nah, but uh, maybe I'll buy my ma a new coat. <laughs> Good boy. Go get yourself a drink. Congratulations, big hero. Oh, that's Sarah. Lucky's off. Well, I had my money. That's on his the wife guys, in the original. So. Drinks are on you. Oh. <laughs> there. Now you're ready for the pictures. Thanks. And hey, when you're done celebrating, you might want to go find your buddy Polly. He's so drunk, he's gonna get hit by a parked car. Yeah, okay. I'll get him home safe. Find Polly. Polly and the rest of your pals have drunk through half my bar already. You found him yet? That's all for another year, folks. Track will be open until 6. Please leave when requested. You mama made that work easy to Tommy. When they started to start racing here 20 years ago, most guys did it, didn't even make the finish. Ah, magic's in the motor, Ralph. I just showed her where to go. Hey, you seen Polly? No, no. He said he was uh, uh, hungry or something. Okay. You enjoy yourself. This remake is just so impressive. You're a natural wheel, man, Tom. You seen Polly anywhere, Vin? He said he was gonna go eat to soak up the booze. But I never seen cannolis come that big. <laughs> okay, so I gotta find Polly now. Man, that race just... Oh, man, that I failed so many times on that race. That was just... Oh, not good. It's like, I, I who, who came up with this, like, the structure on this... That win just put my daughter through another year at school, Tom. Hey, anything for the Coletis. Well, enjoy the moment. How you doing? But deal with Polly before he embarrasses himself and the family. I will not let the boss's day end this hourly. You don't have to worry, Frank. Great race, I'll kid. find him. I like how you can talk to all the characters. Because in this time period, alcohol was illegal still. 
Last Rem year I heard the motors for my apartment, but that's as close That's as how the mafia made its fortune. How'd you drive after the tuna? Tried to go side long at a five brick walls, but we made it. You see Polly any place? Okay, by five minutes ago, maybe. Looked like it had a smell from the barrel. Sounds about right. Thanks, Lucas. Oh, what do we got here? Okay. Great race, champ. Hey! Last time I saw you drive like that, Tom, I had a gun to your head. <laughs> Saying there wasn't one today. <laughs> when our side of town is drowning in dough, that means you're safe. Hey, you seen Polly? Guy soused. Came through walking sideways. Yeah, I heard. Up, the other guy's gonna send the cops over. Yeah, I think Polly's big day at the track's over. There's Polly. Cow says moo, and the chicken says quack. What does the bird say? Polly looks so much different the in the remake. Guy back there says you gotta go home. That's an asshole. You should show some respect. Well, that's true, but I'm saying you gotta go home too. Before you resurface the pit lane. Well, okay then. I guess. <laughs> Let's go, champ. Get in the car, okay. today, Tommy, with the, the driving. I was right. I was right when I found you. You know what I said? What did you say, Polly? I said, this guy can drive. Stop Salieri. This is a guy who can drive. And here we are. Here we are. Right here. That's where we are. You put me to shame, Tom. Look at you. Now you're even a some kind of race car driver. We all got a You're doing real good since you joined the family, but you know you got it easy, right? <laughs> Me and Sam, we keep the real stuff from you. That right, huh? You don't know what it's like. You get the call to see the dawn and your mind's racing. Done some bad shit, Tom. All in this together. I do what the Don asks when he asks. Just like you. You're like me, you can't just shut it down. Blank it out like Sam does. Go home to... Whoever the hell he goes home to. Polly, you're drunk. You're gonna have to clam up for your own sakes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I want to go with the lady. Uh, I'm not helping you with that today. <laughs> Take me to the ladies. Take me to the blue tropics. I don't know. I ought to take you home. The bridge. Take the bridge over to the island. Take me to the ladies. Take me to those sweet patooties. Uh, home? Brought me home. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's, yeah, a good idea. Yeah, well, okay, I'm gonna. Sweet dreams, tough guy. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I, I don't feel so good. Yeah, probably not vomit in the car, huh?